Hey everybody, uh, this is Lincoln, and uh, this is how I was able to pay off 16 grand of my remaining student loan uh, in one year. And now I'm debt free because of that. So these are some principles that I used to pay off that debt. Now you can choose a little bit um, to apply it to your pay debt payments, um, or you can you know, add on to it or things like that. Um, but uh, I hope it helps people out there. Uh, because I know debt can hurt a lot, uh, and if you don't really know about your debt, you don't realize how much you're throwing away and how much um, you end up paying in the long term. So in this example here, this is not a student loan. In this example, it's a line of credit, uh, so the interest rate is a little bit higher than a student loan. Uh, so in this example, it's a 7.25% interest, and um, and uh, so the daily interest in this example is $2.78. Uh, their balance originally was $14,000 of a loan, and they have a bank fee every single month of $10. Uh, so in this example here, uh, this person, if they continue to pay minimum payments, and it's not unreasonable for people uh, or not, uh, uncommon for people to pay minimum payments, especially nowadays with you know all these other fees that people have to pay and you know things that if they're living month to month off different things. Um, so in this example here, uh, if you pay minimum payments, uh, it would take you 39 years. So you wouldn't be finished paying it off until December 31st, 2050, uh, to pay off this debt at minimum payment. Now let's make a one dollar difference here. If all you did was make a one dollar change, so you know some people find change everywhere. You know if you just throw it in, what happens? Well, that additional one dollar that you invested into your loan will make a difference of sixteen dollars down the road. Uh, so that's a sixteen dollar savings for yourself. Now instead of finding one dollar, you find seven dollars in your couch or whatever, and you decide you're gonna throw in seven dollars addition to what you're already paying in just that one payment. Well, that would mean that you save a total of $126 down the road, and you actually lose one month of payments just by adding $7 down the road, uh, now instead of later. So, uh, some of the principles that I use, of course, is a lot of people do it, um, sell stuff. Um, you know, getting rid of things you don't need, garage sales, um, anything like that. You know, if you win something, you end up getting rid of it. So, let's say in a real life example here, um, I win an iPad from work, or you can win other things from work, or whatever, you know, you win things. People win things, and uh, they could either keep it for themselves, or they could get rid of it. And I chose to get rid of my iPad too. Uh, so, that's another $520 in my pocket. Now, I could choose to, you know, keep it and spend it for myself, or I could choose to throw it into debt. Now, in this example, let's say I threw this amount of cash into debt. A one-time payment in February, in addition to the $100 that I would have put in with my minimum payments, would mean 620 of course. What does that mean? Well, it means that I cut six years off debt payments, so I saved myself $7,100 just by adding a one-time payment and making no other changes to my debt. And, you know, every time you find something, you know, on the ground, you know, it adds up. So just uh, a little thing out there for people you know, to see how much of a difference that actually makes um, instead of just paying your average amount uh, in your payments for student loans, car pay payments, house payments, whatever. It makes a huge difference down the road. Now, let's look at ledger activities. Everybody can get rid of ledger activities um, or any ledger items um, if you get really serious with your debt. And in this case, I have a few examples here. Cable TV, $50 a month for this example. Um, let's say they go to Starbucks every single weekday for $4 uh, a drink. And uh, in, for this person, they eat out $200 a month, but in, this, in here, they decide maybe, okay, I'll just cut half of my eating out expenses, so they saved $100. And because of that, uh, they're not eating out as much, and they don't have TV to watch, they're getting a little bit more active, so they don't need their $20 gym membership. So let's look at the TV here. Just getting rid of the TV alone. A lot of people will say, you know, I don't want to get rid of my TV because I am on a contract. Um, now, let's, most TV companies will charge like maximum three months payments uh, or you know $300 cancellation or whatever it is, but in the long term, this person in the three-year contract that they have will have paid $1,800 um, and a $300 cancellation means nothing compared to that $1,800 you have to end up paying later down the road because you don't want to pay that uh, cancellation fee now. So, by adding $50 to your payments, which is 50% increase, you end up paying off this debt in 2024. That's a 26 years, uh, that's a 26 year betterment, I guess, if that's a word. Uh, you you don't have to pay 26 more years of debt payments because of that. And in that in this case, you save $24,000. Now let's bump it up to that Starbucks debt that I was talking about. The Starbucks eating out and also you know getting rid of that gym membership. Uh, so throwing that amount of money that you would have spent anyway into these debt payments. 
Well, that means you don't have to... You finish off paying your debt in 2016. Um, now, a lot of people have, like, rent to own furniture and that kind of stuff. So in this example, I added, you know, this person pays $100 a month for rent to own furniture, and they would have finished paying it off in September. So in October, I added on an extra $100 that they would have spent anyway for that kind of uh, rent to own furniture. So now, that bumps it up for another year. So they're finished off paying this debt off in 2015. Now, lifestyle. Um, a lot of people like have huge lifestyles that they want to show off and everything like that. Like having a 5 gig phone plan uh, when you really don't need it. Um, and uh, I looked at my own data plan and I realized that I was you know, using about two to 300 megs of data a month. So, instead of spending $100 on that 5 gig plan, I now, well, I don't, I don't spend this much, but in this example, um, five, a $50 um, 500 meg plan a month. So that's a $50 savings, throw that into your debt. And uh, let's say you have a phone plan that you have for 400 minutes uh, a month, but you realize that you use 100 to 120 minutes, um, and you can find this out with you know all your phone bill payments in the last year and see how many minutes you actually use. So I found out that I use about 100 to 120 minutes a month, so I really didn't need a you know a 400 dollar a 400 minute plan. So 15 dollars savings right there, and same with high speed internet. A lot of people will be like, oh, I need the fastest internet speed ever, but really, what are you using it for? Um, you know, and I found out I was using it only for YouTube and email and Facebook. Really, uh, I don't need a 100 meg internet plan. So instead of paying $85 uh, in this example, uh, you can downgrade it to a 6 meg plan, which is more than adequate for YouTube uh, viewing and stuff like that. $61 savings and add that all together, that's $126 that you would have spent anyway that you're putting it into your debt now. So downgrading your life means that uh, you cut it off by yet another year. So you're sa you've saved a total of your original uh, from 46000 now you've saved a total of $30,000 that you would have put in your debt down the road just by doing a little few changes in your life. Now, another way, uh, of course, is not just a downgrade, but to increase your income. Um, you know, I chose to have an additional side income, but some people don't choose to do that. So uh, you could have a raise in your job, you could have an additional job, um, or you could, you know, just get additional work bonuses or whatever. You know, things that just come up, uh, GST checks, all of that kind of stuff. And you can throw it into your debt. So this person in this example here got a $1 raise, um, and they have a $300 Christmas bonus that they decided, I'm going to throw it into debt. And uh, let's say they did uh, some bottle drives, two bottle drives, $30 each, um, and they decide to throw it into their debt. Now, now, this person now finishes off paying their debt on December 31st, 2013. So it would take them two years to pay off the debt, and it would have saved them a total of $31,000 in the long term. And... Uh, that's, instead of paying it off in 2050, they now pay it off in 2013, so, I don't know, 37 years, for I don't know, a long time um, difference. And uh, now, the good thing, the great thing is, now that they have paid off that debt, every single month they have an additional $736 they can spend on whatever they want. They can make other debt payments, or they can buy themselves an Apple iPad every single month. Now, wouldn't that be sweet to be able to buy an iPad every single month? Pretty cool to me! And uh, so I hope that helps uh, people out there um, to pay off their debt uh, sooner and, uh, you know, apply these principles and, you know, every little thing that counts, um, as you see, you know, that $1 turned into $16 later down the road, um, you know, and uh, you can do whatever you want with that money after you get debt free. So, you know, pay off your debt now and don't buy now, pay later, pay now and live um, better off later.